This really, truly excellent tutorial is brought to you by Skillshare, and we're going to talk about them later. In this tutorial, I don't only want to show you how to make camera motion, but like hyper-realistic camera motion. I mean, look at this. It looks like it was actually filmed, and that's because it was. We're basically going to use our phone, particularly, I think it has to be an iPhone, sorry, Android users, to basically film our scene and translate that into Blender. Let me show you the bad version first, then we'll talk about how to do the good one. Okay, so in Blender, this is the typical thing people will tell you to do. They'll say, take your camera, keyframe it, go 100 frames down, let's move it down over here and maybe have it like rotate a little, keyframe, now the camera's moving. Then typically we open the graph editor where you can see all of our animation data. So here you can see all our keyframes. We go into something like, let's say the rotation mainly. So you can think of rotation as uh, where's the camera kind of facing. For the X, we're gonna add some noise, which you can see moves it up and down. You make that thing slower, you make it less intense, you add a bit of detail. Then they say copy this modifier, put it on Y, paste, and then offset it, and then same thing with Z. And then you get this kind of camera motion that is definitely random, but I don't think it looks realistic at all. So I'm using an application called CamTrack AR. There are other versions of this, but this one has like pretty good free features and there isn't much to say about this, right? So you film what it is that you are seeing. It will prompt you to select the floor, which will automatically detect what is the floor. And then you just walk around your scene for preparation. You can define other pieces of geometry by kind of putting down these anchor points that we're going to be able to access later. It's better to kind of tell the app, these are the areas I'm going to go in, get familiar with them before we start moving. You hit record and then you do your camera motion. Again, you want to kind of imagine that you're in the 3D space. You stop recording and that's kind of the essence of it. It will export all the files you need, including the video, which I think you could pick between 30 and 60 FPS. And more importantly, it will export, I guess, a bunch of different file formats. The one that I've actually gone to work is this like HFCS it's file. I forget what it's called. It stands for hit film, basically. And there will be an add-on that lets you import it. Another thing I want to mention is that in this app, they have like a 3D feature, which lets you kind of get rid of what it is you're looking at and then really kind of feel what your camera motion is going to be like outside of context, which may help or may hurt. I'm not sure. So I'm going to put a link in the description for where you can get this like Python script. Again, you just install in your desktop, you find hit film, you add it, enable it. Now, when you go to file and import, you have all your normal stuff, but then also hit film AR tracking. You hit it and then you pick your tracking file. The issue is I don't really have a distinguisher between these. So I'm just going to bring in one of these. So let's get rid of our default objects. It's going to add a camera and then all of our anchor points as well. And another thing to notice is even if you film in 1080p, it seems to kind of like crop it to like a four by three aspect ratio. If we're gonna go to the camera, we're gonna enable kind of like an overlay of a movie clip. And if I'm correct, this is the hallway shot. We'll see. Yes, okay. So you can see the tracking isn't pixel perfect, but it's pretty good. Even if you have like 1920 by 1080, like you have extra resolution, it will kind of crop out these bars on the side, which I guess kind of like desyncs these or unsyncs them. So just hit crop and now you can see the full thing. So I wonder if it actually has your 1080p, but it's capturing extra stuff that you wouldn't normally get in your footage. And let's kind of like loosely model our area, even though I'm not like texture projecting or anything like this. Because if I'm walking through a scene, if I remake that scene in 3D, it will make even more sense in context. If you're getting some misalignment, by the way, with your vanishing points, that could either be a zooming issue, which I don't know if it is. It does seem to calculate for focal length on the fly, which I guess means you can like zoom in as you film, but it could also be an issue with orientation. So I'm going to add an empty. This empty is going to let me reorient the scene basically. Going to get rid of these anchor points. I don't really need them for my case and take your camera and parent it to the empty. The reason I'm doing this, by the way, is the camera has all these keyframes, which means we can't really move it unless we parent it to something and then we can kind of move the parent but maintain the motion. Bring them up to the top of the ceiling and it is pretty good by the way that it kind of matches perspective. Clearly there are some issues but what are you going to do? This is not a uh, one for one. By the way we have this like trash can. I don't know if you can see. There's a trash can over there that automatically opens when you say open. Except it totally doesn't do that. It just opens when I say random shit and I never know what the trigger word is. Either way, you can see I've loosely modeled this hallway. It's mostly like inspired by this. It's not one for one. And one thing I want to mention is by default, I did use 60 frames per second, which is kind of like this crisp video, but I don't like the look of it. If I just change this to 30 FPS, you're going to see 
It is now 30 FPS, but the motion is twice as slow because we're going from 60 to 30, so it takes twice as long to do the uh, motion. As you might expect, since it takes twice as long, we should make the camera twice as fast, right? So if we scale on the x-axis, these keyframes, type in 0.5, and now this will be the same speed. Although I should mention, when you do this, the uh, video is going to be out of sync now because the video is still... 60 FPS, FPS, but we no longer need it, so we don't care. Final thing, let's just kind of set up our scene in a way that is a bit more interesting. So I'm going to use EV. Let's make a checkerboard material to make it not stretch. Um, this is because it's generated coordinates and the hallway is very long, so it's stretching our coordinates. Just set this to object coordinates. Literally all you have to do, pick a smaller number to make it smaller. You get everything for free, right? Like motion blur is going to be accurate, but I'm just going to add some lights. And here's a little trick, by the way learned this recently. If you have a bunch of objects of the same type, like these lights, and you want to make them brighter, so let's say from 10 we go to 100, it's only affecting one light. If you have all of them selected, you could right-click, copy to selected, and now they all have this property. Some ambient occlusion, make that five times stronger, so without and with. Maybe add blue, maybe add screen space reflections, and definitely like motion blur and stuff like that. Even though your camera is referencing the original footage, there's no reason you can't change it after the fact if you don't like it. Like you can overwrite animations or even uh, change the focal length. I guess I can just right click clear keyframe. So now the focal length doesn't change, but you can like zoom out and have the same camera motion, but it's like more zoomed out now. Whoa there. I hope you weren't looking too closely at the screen. Anyways, this tutorial you're watching right now is sponsored by Skillshare. You've heard of them. It's the number one place to learn things online, whether it's photography, videography, or in our cases, most likely 3D related stuff. And Skillshare has added learning paths, which aren't just like independent like modules, but it is a flow, a sequence of them that you watch one after another after another. And guys, I got one that's relevant to you. Become a professional 3D animator career skills. Knowing my animation skills, I better get on this. And when you go through the full learning path, you might find at the very end adapting your 3D skills, 3D animation from Blender to Maya. This is very topical because the VFX studio I occasionally work at is setting up files to go over to Maya literally for animation. But anyways, Madison in this video talks about how do you transition from one software to another, or you could think of it not as a transition, but just adding another thing to your toolkit, your tool belt. So thank you, Madison Erwin, for making this learning path. So when you are ready to join Skillshare, I have a link. It's in the description. And the first 500 people who click it will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Plenty of time to do that learning path. And now realistic camera motion. Whoa. Let's do this one more time with a different scene, just so you really get the process down. It's not hard. File, import, hit film, background images movie clip so you can see it's now tracking perfectly if i want to change this to 1080p remember the camera is not going to sync because we need to just set this to crop i believe parent your camera to the empty and then you can actually just kind of let's see reorient our coordinate system here okay let's see what that came out like okay i'm scanning the space my camera actually makes sense relative to what i'm doing i'm looking around corners okay you basically understand the concept, but this is the technique that people use to make backroom videos and analog found footage in 3D. I got interested in this because of Kane Pixels, the oldest view, which is the thing he made after his backroom series. So there you go. Hopefully you have an iPhone.